Mad Marlin from Houston, Texas asks, what is your personal formula for success and overcoming obstacles in everyday life? Well, Mad Marlin, that's uh, probably a long philosophical answer, but um, uh, I often uh, am asked that kind of question by uh, kids who wonder if they'd you know, like to be astronauts or whatever, and I tell them it doesn't matter whether you want to be an astronaut or uh, no matter what it is, if you want to be successful in whatever profession you're headed into, uh, first off, you have to work hard, you have to uh, do your level best and s seek excellence, you have to have self-discipline, uh, you have to uh, not be afraid to make mistakes because uh, sometimes people give up when they make mistakes, you have to overcome them and not make all of them the same, same way, but uh, learn from them. You have to develop a faith because it's important uh, for you to have something uh, solid to, to ground yourself when the chips are down especially and uh, you have to earn what you're getting. This is not going to fall in your lap, so you better get busy and get with it. Uh, besides that, uh, there are a few other things, I guess, like uh, you can't get involved with drugs or booze and those kind of things, or trouble with the law. Those things will put the quitters on the, your whole career. And then uh, realize that you can do a lot more than you think you can. So reach beyond your grasp. And uh, we can all just do more than we, we thought we could, and that's what you'll be called upon to do if you get into some challenging line of work. And then eventually when you um, decide what it is you want to do, you have to be committed and dedicated to it and ready for an opportunity that comes along. And when you're at that position and have the vision in mind of what you want to do and you're ready to go, just never, ever, ever, never, ever give up because it's a persistence that some folks don't have. They could take a few more steps up the mountain and have a whole lot better view or take the next uh, uh, trip around the mountain and have a whole lot better view of what's ahead. So well, don't quit too soon, otherwise somebody else will get the opportunity. Those are kind of my words of philosopher kids, and those are the ones that I've followed. All right. Our next question comes from the Netherlands and from Mark. I read somewhere that your family roots lie in the Netherlands. Do you speak any Dutch? Well, Mark, I don't speak any Dutch. Uh, my parents would speak Dutch and Frisian sometimes in the house when they didn't want us to know what they were talking about. But otherwise, all I know is English. But I do know... And my grandfather is a special kind of Dutchman, not just a Dutchman, he's a Frisian. And he comes from the little village of Piam in Friesland. And uh, he came over to the United States when he was about 25 years old, 1893, and uh, raised a family of about 13 children. And uh, I'm proud of my Frisian heritage. Uh, when, when I flew in space the first time, the uh, Dutch saw my name in the paper. Uh, and they made a headline that said, this guy's name is Laus Mugl, S-M-A, so we know that he comes from Friesland. So they looked at my family tree, and the Queen's Commissioner invited myself and my wife over for a visit for about 10 days, and we found about 150 of our, our, my closest relatives, and many of them work at the pottery shop right there in Makam, uh, just a couple of miles away from Piam, and uh, we had a wonderful reunion. And uh, so uh, we have that Frisian heritage, and my father would speak Frisian when their brothers came. My mother's not a Frisian, but that's okay. She's still Dutch background. And uh, so I come from the, the best roots of, uh, that you could plant there in the Netherlands. Thank you for that question. Randy from Utah has a question for you. What were your thoughts when flying the prototype MMU in Skylab? Well, Randy, I didn't know if we'd ever get to take this uh, prototype um, man maneuvering unit outside or not, uh, but uh, we thought that if we did, we ought to try it out inside first. And so what we had was a uh, prototype of the one that really was built into the maneuvering unit that has been used uh, from the space shuttle, where Bruce and McCandless flew it uh, at least once, and Pinky Nelson flew it, uh, and sometimes quite far away from the um, space shuttle without tether. But uh, the uh, prototype that we flew had several different kind of control modes and other kind of engineering in it uh, that enabled us to determine which were the best options to use in making the one that we really flew. And that was the purpose of the uh, uh, flight of the prototype backpack in the, uh, in the Skylab. We could fly it very precisely around inside that large volume, which was 22 feet in diameter, so we had plenty of room to go. And it flew very well, very crisply, but there were some parts of it that we did not recommend for the uh, final module, model that was flown outside of the uh, space shuttle. Francois from Canada would like to know, what scientific experiments left you with the most vivid memories? Well, you know, we had 60 experiments on the uh, Skylab space station, and the ones that were uh, most focused uh, on the uh, 
science um, understanding the problem of the uh, operations of the sun. We we're studying the earth and its resources, how to manage them more effectively, and the medical aspects of, of being in space. So all of them have uh, had very uh, vivid memories. I guess the ones that we, uh, uh, when we were studying the sun, uh, we were looking for solar flares. And so when we got a solar flare, that was uh, a real breakthrough. And this was something that hadn't been done before. But when we did get those, uh, then I thought we contributed greatly to the knowledge of what was happening on the sun. As far as studying the Earth and its resources, we were able to uh, determine that we could uh, understand and, and uh, manage our resources more effectively and more efficiently with uh, space equipment that we could do on, we could do on Earth. And uh, that was the purpose, just to see if we could do it. And, uh, and now, of course, that's done mostly by satellite. Some of the medical experiments were uh, very uh, memorable in that uh, some of them were a little bit invasive, uh, but uh, we survived them quite well and we learned uh, how to live and work in space for a long period of time and we uh, found out that we could now live in weightless condition, do useful work for long periods of time and we didn't know that when we started. Uh, there were other experiments though that also stick out in my mind and one of them I remember particularly that um, was unusual was a uh, high school student experiment in which we had a spider up there and that uh, spider would have to spin a web in uh, space with no gravity or no wind to make it happen and uh, the whole uh, universe was more interested in what that spider was doing than what we were doing <laughs> in real terms of real science while we were up there. So uh, there are uh, probably um, several others that I could think of if I had more time but those were the ones that were uh, captivated most of our attention. Our last question comes from Stephane. What kinds of sensations did you experience during takeoff, and what are the differences between the Saturn and shuttle launch? Well, I'm glad you asked, asked that question uh, because I'm um, down here at the Kennedy Space Center giving lectures every day. And one of the lectures that I give is to demonstrate the differences between the launches and entries on the, sky, on the uh, Saturn and Apollo versus the, the space shuttle. So I just uh, gave that lecture this morning and I should be able to remember. Um, it's a question that can be answered by only six people. And there are six of us who have had the chance to fly on both the Saturn and the shuttle. So uh, first off, the uh, Saturn, of course, will get you into uh, Earth orbit in 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes, shuttle takes eight and a half minutes. The uh, Saturn or the capsule, Apollo capsule, will, you'll experience four Gs going up and down, uh, whereas when we go up in the shuttle, we up to get up to three Gs. Of course, if you are thinking of G's um, in terms of your weight, if you weigh 200 pounds, you'll feel at 4 G's, you feel like 800 pounds on your back, and your arms are four times as heavy and so forth. The uh, Saturn is also a staged rocket. That means that you have to shut down the burned out stage and separate it before you can light the second stage. And uh, that happens twice with the Saturn V. And uh, so you're, uh, you have quite a few G's on you uh, uh, forward and all of a sudden the engine shuts down and throws you forward in the straps and now you're coasting and you hope this second engine is going to light but first you have to get rid of that burnt out uh, first stage and so we have the world's uh, most efficient can opener that has an explosive charge all around that uh, circumference of the rocket and we fire that off big explosion down there and the disk of the debris goes out in every direction and it falls away and then you have to ignite the second stage so the staging in the shuttle uh, is not like that. We really don't have that sort of a staging. We uh, have the uh, engines on the, the uh, space shuttle lit from the very ground up. We have the solid rocket boosters there. We drop them off after two minutes because they're burned out. We call that staging, but there is no uh, shut down, uh, throw forward in the straps, uh, explosion to uh, separate, and then relight. So the staging is a lot different. So there are probably some other uh, um, the differences, uh, one of them I like to refer to is when coming back, of course, uh, in the capsule we have to land in the water and go through a lot of G-forces and high temperatures and then we have to uh, get picked up uh, with a raft or a helicopter and get on the ship and take two, uh, two days getting back to the shore. Whereas with a shuttle, when you land, you just let it roll out on the runway and you turn things off, you come out the hatch, walk down the stairway, get your picture taken and go to lunch. Thank you very much. This has been Astro Chat with Jack Lausma. Thank you.